Good morning. I thought I'd give you a brief tour of some of the changes I've made to my Rockwood A128 camper in addition to the one already documented in the uh, about the new storage I've added. One of the changes I've made is deciding that uh, since we don't know what this newfangled thing called electricity is, we would try to keep uh, our options simple and we would use solar power to try to keep our batteries charged. We'll see if that works. Maybe it won't work. If it doesn't, then we'll have to try something else. Um, this is the adapter I put on the you know, sink drain. Probably just about everybody in the whole uh, camper world has made something like that in the past. Um, here is where the electrical panel, uh, the solar panel, now plugs in along with the uh, cord for the uh, shore power. And then around on this side of the camper are a couple of other things. One of the things that I've done is I've, I've put these little, uh, uh, little uh, I don't know what you'd call them, door uh, part, compartment clips or whatever. I put one of those on the front door so it would stay open. It was kind of troublesome having the thing flap and hit me all the time. I also changed out the uh, key locks on both of the, f of the uh, cargo doors for thumb latches. You may be secure, wondering about how I keep security, but I think I should tell you that just about every camper in your campground, no matter where you are, uses exactly the same key number for their lockable outside cargo doors. In fact, this was told to me by an A-liner user that I was talking with. He said, I can tell you what your key number is. He came out with a number, and I looked at my key, and there it was. And he had also made this change. So that since there's no security anyway, why not make it a lot easier to open and close these doors? Uh, the final thing I want to show you today is the screen door that I've put on my camper. And uh, you're probably saying to yourself, what screen door? I don't see it. So let me take you inside. Okay, from inside, you can see that uh, I've got this sort of uh, screen meshy area made out of ordinary plastic screen mesh, bought at a hardware store. Uh, cost me $6.42. Um, that was for about twice as much as I actually needed because I originally bought enough to go the full length of the door and then realized that it actually works much better to leave the bottom part of the door solid and just have a half screen. The screen is attached at the top up here behind this padded area and you may say behind the padded area how did he get that off? Well the buttons like this one right here and the button in the middle and the button on the other side are just covers for snaps. You pop them off and in there are three uh, combo square drive, uh, Phillips drive screws. You unscrew them and off comes this top part and you can set your curtain, your, excuse me, your screen up behind it. I cut the screen to size. As you can see it slightly overlaps the uh, area that it needs and then the whole thing is reinforced with duct tape, the handyman secret weapon. I had some black cloth duct tape and that's what I used. To that I have gl uh, hot glued a whole bunch of fender washers. There's a batch of them. Uh, let's see, there's another one. I have actually five of them across the door there. And then up the other side I have three more. So there's uh, 11 in all. Those fender washers snatch the door by means of these small magnets here, which I've just epoxied on. I tried originally hot gluing them on, but that didn't work at all. So you can see I have them across the door and I have them up the side. That clicking noise that you might have been able to hear is the sound that the door makes that lets you know that it's closed. All in all, I may have spent $15 on this, and I hope this inspires you to look at the idea for yourselves.